Hi everyone, my name is Evelyn Juarez and today I'm going to be going over the science section of the ATIC 7 exam. I made a video previously talking about tips and tricks and resources that you could use to study for the exam and a few of you guys wanted me to break down each section and what you should study and all that. So I'm going to do that for you guys and I'm going to start with the science section just because this one's a little bit more complex and also when I took it I ended up scoring 100% on this section which honestly is kind of insane. Like I scored 100%, meaning I didn't miss a single question, which is kind of crazy. So that makes me, I feel like I am able to give you guys good advice because of that. And I'm able to give you guys the topics that you need to like narrow your focus on and stuff. But I do want to say that I don't want this to be the only source of material that you study. I do not want this video to be the only thing that you use to study. Because that won't guarantee that you score 100%. I put in months. I put like a total probably six months of studying. Um, but I'm going to give you guys a comprised list of topics that kept coming up in my research before I took the exam and all that. That people kept saying like, hey, like this, you should study this. You should study that. And every time someone would say, hey, like I took the exam. You should study this. I would write that down and I compiled the big list of topics. But also, this list isn't an in-depth list of everything you need to know for this exam. That's why I'm saying, like, this should not be your only source of study material because I, can't, it's impossible for me to tell you guys um, and help you guys study for this entire exam. That's impossible, but I can give you guys a little bit more perspective on what you should for sure know. Okay, so when I was studying for the exam, I bought the Metrics book, the yellow one. I think I have it over here somewhere. I studied the science section, took notes on it. I watched YouTube videos and took notes on that. I bought the study manual off the ATI's website and I used that to like just read over. I didn't really take notes on it because I had taken so many notes on it already that I didn't feel like I needed to take more. I used Quizlet. I bought the ATI's bundle of exam like practice exams and came with practice test a practice test b and it came with the anatomy and physiology exam i took all those practice exams and i made sure that i scored 100 percent on each one so like the first time i took it those practice exams i wasn't scoring 100 percent, but i made sure to take it again so i would take it the first time if i scored like 70 percent and whatnot I would go back and study more like, okay, I still need to study more on these topics. Like that's totally fine. You can always improve. I would go back, study, and then take the practice exam again and see if I increased my score. And I always aimed to take these practice exams over and over and over until I could score 100% each time that I would take it. So I want you to do all that studying before you start to like really just only focus on these topics because I did all that studying. So I had all that knowledge already. And then I went through and did my research of topics that people kept saying, you should study this, study that, study that. Wrote them all down and use those on top of all this previous study, okay? So I'm gonna start giving you guys that list now. But I want you to know that this list is kind of broad. It's more of like, I'm giving you a topic and you're going to write it down and then on your free time when you're studying you're going to go and take notes and go in depth on this topic. I'm not going to sit here and teach you guys what each topic means because I'm not a good teacher. So giving you the broad topic bullet points just jot down each topic go back and do your studies on each topic that I'm going to talk about. Okay so under like I tried to separate them because when I took these notes I honestly I didn't separate them by like bio chem micro I just literally compiled the giant list of a whole bunch of topics but I did my best to kind of separate it for you guys a little bit so under biology um understand DNA transcription understand genetics and Punnett squares there was a few questions on the exams both times that I took it asking questions like if you cross a red flower and a white flower what are the phenotype variations that you're gonna get when you cross those two 
if you cross a big F and little F with big F and big F, like what is the percentage of blank, you know? So being able to answer questions like that, you should really know mitosis, understand mitosis, understand the process, understand when it's used for, understand meiosis, understand the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous, understand the difference between dominant and recessive genes, understand eukaryotes and prokaryotes and the difference between similarities, understand adhesion versus cohesion and examples of those. Phase changes, know the different phase changes, know the different states of matter, being able to know the difference between phenotypes and genotypes, not onto like micro, being able to understand viruses, viral replication, the immune system, innate versus adaptive immunity, how antibiotics work, um, anatomy and physio, action potentials. No action potentials, how they work, the threshold, know the difference between central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Understand heart flow. The blood, blood flow through the heart is a very important topic that you will get asked about in some form or shape. There will be a question on it. Sweat glands, tendons, different endocrine hormones, epithelium, respiratory system, the kidney system, like urinin, aldosterone, all that, thyroid, pulmonary circulation, systemic circulation, gas exchange, glands, layers of the skin, know the different layers of the skin and know what each layer of the skin does or contains, the pituitary gland, the brain stem, reflex arc, what happens when salt concentration increases, digestion and what enzymes aid in digestion, parts of the intestine for chemistry, volume of a liquid. What I mean by that is there was a question I got about like calculating volume of a liquid and honestly I remember seeing somebody post about like understand volume of liquid and I was like okay yeah sure like why am I gonna get a like it's not that important go to take the test the first time and I'm like oh, there actually is a question about volume I don't remember how to calculate it I'm blanking out right now but just 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 know volume of liquid atoms and protons understand isotopes Hypertonic solutions, hypotonic solutions, no different types of bonds, like ionic bonds, covalent bonds. Understand synthesis reactions and decomposition reactions. Understand active transport, passive transport, diffusion, osmosis, different types of bonding, like hydrogen bonding. Properties of water and water as a solvent is one that kept popping up. Hydrophobic and hydrophilic substances also. So that is everything that I have for that first list of topics. And that was kind of like the list that I compiled, like researching what people had said that was common themes on this exam. And then I have a different list of things that you should focus on based on my experience with taking the exam twice. So understand the male reproductive system and the different types of fluids. So if there could be a question like, um, which gland produces this type of fluid within the male reproductive system? And you should be able to identify which, which one makes what. Okay, so just know everything about the male reproductive system. Parts of the central nervous system. You need to just know basic information. What does each body system do? Like the immune system prevents infections, okay? So if they're asking a question about, oh, this system can, does like gas exchange or something, you know that the immune system prevents infections. And so you're like, okay, it's obviously not this way. So just know basic information of each body system. Knowing the types of layers of the skin. This one, again, is a question that popped up where it was like, which layer 
of the skin contains blank and it was like answers like stridulum corneum stridulum bacilla i don't even know if i said that right but know like what each layer actually does or contains um digestion again and really understanding digestion and the types of enzymes and salts and whatever helps aid digestion stem cells understand stem cells understand the different types of organs and their functions like the gallbladder the pancreas the liver what do they do what are their functions properties of water really understand the properties of water adhesion versus cohesion like there could be a question where it's like this is happening are they is the adhesion properties greater than the cohesion properties things like that blood pathway like i said blood pathway is really important you'll get asked a question about blood pathway some form in some way okay so just know everything you need to know about blood flow what are the arteries use what are the veins use how does it start like diastole and systole pulmonary circulation systemic circulation again just everything within that realm you should know pH there's a question about pH like how to calculate a pH very random but just, just throw it in there in your studies just in case DNA transcription and the different types of bonds used for DNA transcription that types of respiration different types of respiration also what happens during respiration like does, di does your diaphragm go up does your diaphragm go down do your ribs whatever to know the rest basically types of respiration different regions of the body being able to di identify different regions and the scientific names for the regions of this body of the body osmosis and diffusion understanding like an atomic radius and being able to identify like which one has the smallest atomic radius things like that protein synthesis how are proteins made understand that again basic genetics like punnett squares and being able to answer questions like what is the percentage of dominant genes versus recessive genes no basic parts of the muscle muscle contraction know the hormones that are involved in like a stress response or a reflex response Basic DNA, what's the difference between DNA and RNA? Know the different types of cellular organelles and what they do. Like mitochondria, lysosomes, Golgi apparatus, all that. Parts of nephron, understand the different parts and what they do, what the function is. Immune system, your plasma cells. Everything, everything within the immune system and like plasma cells and all that. Peripheral nervous system versus your central nervous system, again, different types, like your sweat glands, um, inhalation, mitosis, meiosis, and fertilization. Also understand the different types of membrane, like serous membrane. And then, okay, that's pretty much it. That's all I have. So, again, these are just the basic broad topics like it's like a bullet point list and just write those topics down go back write notes on them study them in depth and try to think of like if they ask me a question about this like i this is the knowledge i have on like the respiratory system so i'm able to answer the question that they're asking me because sometimes the questions aren't going to be like so direct like uh the immune system does this sometimes it's a little more complex but you understand what each system does, so you're able to answer the question. Anywho, so I hope that this helps you guys. And I know that you probably wanted something more in-depth, but these are just broad topics that kept coming up a lot in my research, and my studies, or things that I saw coming up a lot in practice exams, on the actual exams. So these are just topics to help aid your studies. It's not, there's no cheat sheet to how to, score 100 percent. you just got to put in the time and effort if you guys would like to purchase my notes you guys are totally open to do that but you don't have to i'm going to link my venmo down below and if you venmo me 
$10 and then comment done and put your Venmo name so that I know it was you. I'm going to email you all my notes, everything that I have. I'll have this, this list of topics on there and I'll have the lists and all that. And I'll also send you the links to all the quizlets that I made from my notes. And yeah, so, but you totally don't have to do that at all. You guys are welcome to use any free resource like YouTube and stuff or just Google people watch people's videos on YouTube and sometimes they link their notes. But I hope this video was helpful and good luck on your studying.